Hey everybody, I'm Tom Basso. Welcome to 10,000 and Below, where we take a look at games that are ranked really low on Board Game Geek, and we tell you what we think of them, or I tell you what I think of them. So here we go. We're taking a look today at 15,701. So we always take a look at the first game, which is Sequence Cats. It sounds bad already. Then we'll jump down here, Epic Roll, which I gave a 2 to. A game, Worker Placement. And this game, Fast Lane. All right, Sequence Cats. This is Sequence, but with cats. Ha, <laughs> Sequence is an okay game. I know a lot of people like Sequence. If you're not sure, but Sequence, you're playing cards to put your chip on one of these spots on the board. It's usually played with playing cards. Um, in this case, it's with a deck of cats. If you like cats, I'm sure this is fine. This looks like one of the seven circles to me. Epic Roll. This is a rolling fantasy style game that I hate it. Uh, bad graphic design boring components. You just roll and see if you kill stuff. There was nothing epic about it. I'll tell you this though, after I gave a very, very negative review of this, I've seen them at several conventions, so it must, must have hit a, something with some people. Worker placement. This is one of these ha 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 games where it's worker placement, the worker placement game. It's a game about placing workers as a temp agency, but also it's a worker placement game. Yeah, okay. But the game itself was unfortunately not that great. It is a worker placement game where you go and get jobs and things like that. I thought I would like it more, but as it is, you can see that I just I gave it a four because the game itself wasn't very good. A funny idea is not enough to carry a game, unless you're Munchkin. Uh, Fast Lane here. This is a racing game uh, that I must have played. When did I review this one? 2011, so almost a decade ago. I must have, yes, I didn't review Fast Lane. I reviewed Wild Horses, I believe, which is the same game. You roll dice and then you try to grab the, the horse that matches those colors. That's the whole game. Good for kids. All right, let's continue on going down this list here. We got United Square as 83 ratings. We'll take a look at that. Django Casino. Jenga Casino. That's a weird looking game. This one has 91 ratings. And then Pool Party. Pool Party I gave an 8.5 to it. It's an excellent game. I ranked that's 15,719. We'll come back. United Square is about making squares of your color, I guess. Wowzers. That is one boring looking game. Django Casino. Django. Why do I keep saying Django? Must be something about seeing the uh and o's at the end of the words. Uh, you're going to bet on the outcome. <laughs> I'm going to pull something. What's the chance of it crashing? That is hilarious that something like this exists. Came out in 2000. All right. Derweg Nak Draconia, the Dark Eye board game line. You control a well-known adventuring race. This must be something from overseas, but it doesn't seem to have a lot of love. Boring, repetitive gameplay. Yeah. The best ratings you can see here are sixes. Pool Party is a dexterity game, one I like a lot. So let me show you what the board looks like. You are taking these cards and you are flipping them into this pool, trying to get yours in there. But this thing is and your stuff can fall out. I find it to be a really entertaining little um, dexterity game. I'm kind of surprised that it's ranked so low. 24 comments on probably the highest one. Dexterity games. It does what it's supposed to do. Thematic tiddlywinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Silly game for kids. I don't know. I just thought, I mean, yes, I agree it's for kids, but I thought it was really well done and fun. Cleopatra's Caboose. It's a weird name for a game. Crunch, the game for utter bankers. Pirates, Quest for Davy Jones Gold. 
And let's see here. 10 4, good buddy. I'm looking at that one just because what it's called. So Cleopatra's Caboose. This is from Steve Zamborski, who I know, a very nice guy. Um, a train game based in ancient Egypt. I've never played this one. I've definitely heard about it because it's one of those names that you just don't forget. Came from Z-Man. Z-Man publishes all kinds of stuff. I don't know why this one is not more popular, why it's ranked so low with 123 comments. Yeah, look at that. There's just a lot of low-ranked style games. The worst game I've ever played, says Gomez the Chimp. He's had a good life then because that doesn't look as bad as some of the stuff I've played. Crunch, the game for utter bonkers. The Crunch is here, Financial Foundations. It's a global bank. Bad debt, bankrupt country, world peace. Eh, meh. Pirates, Quest for Davy Jones Gold. Eh, action packed board game, blah, 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 blah. Uses similar constructible ships as Pirates of the Spanish Main. Oh, well, that's more interesting. You get to punch out the ships and play them. You know what? I remember seeing this game now. This came out in 2006. I remember it. James Ernest and Mike Slinker and Jordan Wiseman. I'll tell you what. These guys are very well-known designers, but apparently when they all work together in something, it's just not as good. Not compatible with a collectible game. Dull and repetitive gameplay. Hero Quest in the High Seas. <sighs> Sounds like you could make it a good game. 10-4, good buddy. I just want to look at this one. I don't know why covers like this amuse me so much. They just do. And looking at this, this is just such a nostalgic looking game. Like, I feel like this one came out. This font here, 1976, this font looks, and the way that the people have the bubbles coming in and everything, uh, this looks like Schoolhouse Rock, doesn't it? This looks like the things that you would see coming out from them. Bum, 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 oh. Bum, 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 bum. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Clash Alley Strategy Board Game, Nodwick, the card game. Uh, there's a game, and we'll just assume it's not a very wonderful game. Big deal, I've played and given a 6 to. Secret Santa, I gave a 5 to. There's Dallas, a game of the Ewing family, and Nacho Loco. All right, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Clash Alley. This one is based, it looks like, on the cartoon that I did not like the animation for, but apparently is quite a good cartoon, at least the, the bits and pieces I've seen of it. This came out in 2013. What does the game look like? Meh, mass markety, but fun, I suppose, for those. Nodwick is a cartoon. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's about uh, Nodwick is the guy who carries all the loot for the adventuring party. Often gets killed, and he gets put back together by... This character here, you can see they're trying to find his body, and I guess that's what they're doing here, is they're putting him back together. A silly, a silly comic strip does not make necessarily for a good game, and that's what this one, unfortunately, looks like. Big deal. Oh, such a cool-looking game. Look at that. I mean, when you look at this, at least for me, when I first saw it, this was when I was getting into Euro games. I saw this, I was like, ooh. At the time, I wasn't as hateful on paper money, but I love these little wheels here. And it's a stock market game, and it's it's okay. I mean, it says here, the smallest notes are 50 million. So there's that. If you want to be like, 50 million, a, a one. So if you're one of those people who dreams about, what if a game became real? Which game would I want to own money-wise? This would be the one, I suppose. So, but I, I just remember it's been a long time since so I played it. I remember thinking it was just not as exciting as I thought it would be. Secret Santa, I gave this one a five. You're giving gifts, better to give gifts. And you're basically just offering people gifts and whether they'll take them or not with funky artwork. Dallas. Anyone got the theme song running through their head right now? Who shot JR? Well, that's actually not what the game's about. Looks like a roll and move style game based on one of the first popular soap opera t style games. Move, I mean, TV shows. All right, Nacho Loco. This one I gave a 4 2. Did not like it. Um, you're getting rid of your cards from your hands, which are triangle cards, which is a real pain in the neck by matching colors, but it's basically like an Uno style game. Except, hey, hey get this all the cards are like nachos. 
All right. There's a game that has 115 rankings, one with 157, one with 148. And War, Age of Imperialism. Woo! How that game has fallen down. Oh, no, 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 no. All right. This one here is re Epplements Bunny Zigzag. Don't come back. It's from Doris Mathow and Frank Nessel, who put together some really good games. Primordial Soup is one that they've done. Um, Doris is a great artist. I like her cute animals that she's done, but this one obviously didn't take off. Digit. Ooh. Picket. Sticks. Uh, the winner is the person who puts out of those cards. You dealt five cards. And the person who, if you can make the pattern six, match the pattern... You can put that card on the table. That's the game. Well, that doesn't actually sound horrible. Huh. Tito and his Partisan Army, Yugoslavia 1941 to 1945. The Guerrilla Warfare in the Balkans. This might be a computer version of it. Another magazine game. Oh, wow. I got to say, like those, it feels like they didn't utilize the the numbers on the the counter space very well here. It looks like everything shrunk down more than it needed to be. All right, War Age of Imperialism from Glenn Drover, who's made a games a lot of people have liked. He just recently, uh, Lizard Wizard on Kickstarter, Raccoon Tycoon has done well, and of course, um, Age of Empires or, or Empires Age of Discovery, very well known game. This one in particular here, was when this came out, this was a big deal because it was like, hey, we have a successor for the Access and Ally style games. And that's what these felt like. You bought a big giant box of plastic. Um, it looked like that. There's the map. You're moving pieces around. The pieces came on sprues like that. There was tech. I don't remember. There was a little bit of technology. Unfortunately, the game was just too clunky at the end of the day. I personally... Liked a lot of it. I liked that. I will admit I was enamored by plastic pieces. I was enamored that you could go buy this game at CompuServe. Um, and so, but, and they made several games in this line. But it's not that great of a game, which is why it's so far down the list here. But you can see a lot of people played it. 793. Giraffeometer should not be this far down. Oh, Star Wars Electronic Galactic Battle. We can't skip that. Batman the Animated Series Almost Got Him Card Game, which I just reviewed. No, I didn't. 2017. Huh. Felt like I just reviewed it. Polar Dare. Gluck's Piratin. And Das Collier. Wow, we're looking at a lot of games from this particular grouping. Draftometer is a good game. You should check this one out. You are basically, you just need to know which facts have the highest and lowest numbers. So the growth of a pearl in a year, um, the length of the giraffe's neck or whatever, and, it will, and then you just have to know which one's the lowest and which one's the highest. It's simple, it's fun, it's very similar to Wits and Wagers. I really like this game. Star Wars Electronic Galactic Battle. This is Star Wars Battleship, Electronic Battleship. Looks like they made one for original Star Wars and for Episode One. Is it Battleship? Yeah, I think it's Battleship. Is it? Maybe it's not. Uh, well, I guess I'm going to have to read the comments now to see if it's Battleship. Yes, Star Wars Electronic Battleship. There you go. Almost got him card game. This is, the, this is actually based on a single episode of... Batman, which uh, the animated series, I love this episode. You got to, it, it, it's a good episode. Anyway, almost got him. This actually kind of spoils the episode because in the episode, all the villains are talking about how they almost got Batman, and one of the villains is like, I'm actually Batman, you know. And so here you're trying to figure out who that is. Um, unfortunately, the game itself isn't very good, um, but I like the concept. Polar Dare. Oh, I like this one. You're walking across ice flows. That's kind of a neat game. I like the polar bear chasing the penguins. Huh. Gluck's Piratin. This is a children's game. 
They're coming back from a treasure hunt. Okay, looks like a, oh, it is a hobby game. Das Collier. Oh, this is a very well-known game from Schmidt Spiel. It came out in 2000. I remember when I first was learning about board games, and this one was one of the ones that was talked about quite a bit. I remember even where I played this. I remember all that. And it's about getting these jewels, and it's a very mathy style game, I thought. Um, man, I don't remember what I said. Let's go down. I believe my, did I review it? Oh, I guess I never did get around to reviewing this one. Huh. But I did not like it. I remember playing it going, ugh. This is what people like? This is not that good of a game. But for a while, it was really buzzed. Uh, Pinocchio, true or false? T-Rex has 264 ratings. Oh. And another meowy game. Mario Party. Party, yeah. Tempest Draconis, History's Mysteries card game. Hey, Froggy, no peeking for 1977. All right, I'm going to look at that one because they told me I couldn't. No peeking. The Grotto 2. All right. Pinocchio, true or false? Unfortunately, not a great game. And, and what this game is is telling lies, and you're then stacking up these discs. That makes Pinocchio's nose. You see it there. That's a kind of a cute idea. Um, I, I, I love that concept. Unfortunately, the game itself is basically you pick a, you tell a story and people guess whether it's true or not. That's been done to death. The Pinocchio stacking up the nose thing here is the different thing, but that's not enough to bring this out of that very crowded genre. T-Rex, this is from Rio Grande, 1999, a trick-taking game-ish. I don't know if I like that graphic design. I like how those eggs look. Are the rules on cards? Oh, the rules are on cards. I like the backs of those cards. Huh. I would play this one. Now we got to see why it's ranked so low. Wow. Nobody gave it a 10 or a 9. The highest rating it has is a few 8s. Interesting variations to trick-taking. A fine trick-taking game. Oh, memory. That's why. People don't like games with memory in them. No peeking. Oh, that's creepy. That is one creepy mask. Uh, I guess you're feeling stuff trying to figure out what it is. All right. Legrado 2. It's a two-player version of the classic Legrado. Really? Can't you just play Legrado with two? Eh, okay. Alrighty, oh, Lifestyle. That has 165 ratings. 421, that looks interesting. Exploration, Globetrotters, The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, and then Screwball Scramble from 1979. Alright, Lifestyle. This is another game from Robinsberger, Guessing People's Lives and Dreams. Where do you want to go on vacation? And you have four possible answers. You put them in order and you guess a sequence. Well, that doesn't sound bad. All right, let's do this. Here's these cards. Which of these would I want to, if I was putting these in order of my preference from best to least? Let me take a look here. Hmm. Well, there's. All righty. I think oh, this is a tough one. I think for number one, I would pick the burger, maybe. Although that sat in the top left looks good. Then I'd pick the truffles. So I'd pick the burger, salad, truffles, and then fish. I don't drink, so the whiskey doesn't mean anything to me. Um, all right, let's do this one. Which of these would I want? Huh. I want that giant house with a staircase. No no questions. That's my number one. Number two would be the little row home thing. I love living in the city. Number three, I guess the pool. I like that idea. Oh, okay, we're getting caught up in this. But I think it's an interesting idea. All right, 421. You roll the dice. The biggest hand takes many tokens, value of points. Oh, it sounds like an LCR style game. Nope. Exploration from 1967. 
It's from Waddington's. Oh, okay. This, so this is like an older style game where you go around and explore stuff. Yeah, again, back in the day, this seems like something I would have enjoyed. Globetrotters from 1984. Travel across the globe. Ooh, I wonder what all those keys are for. Huh. Here are the keys. Oh, I guess there's spots that you visit. A Hobbit, an unexpected journey. A Lego game. That I wasn't expecting, folks. A Lego Hobbit game. So Lego made a whole pile of these games. And you play through them. None of the games, unfortunately, were that good. This is obviously one of them. But it, there's still kind of a neat thing to see. And finally, Screwball Scramble. Oh, is this even a game? Okay, I played this, or not maybe this one, but, you know, these things where there's the, you're, you're pressing the buttons and moving the levers to get the ball to go from one spot to the other. As a kid, I thought this was, like, one of the coolest things on Earth. There's... Run Yourself Ragged, this ripoff one is called. <laughs> okay, I guess it's not really a game. It's more of a puzzle, but I, I enjoyed these. I still, if I saw one right now, I would want to play it. Yeah, I like the concept here. Screwball Scramble. All right, folks, well, that is another in the series 10,000 and below. We keep going lower and lower, yet we keep finding interesting things. Did you see something interesting I didn't talk about in this one? Mention it in the comments. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching 10,000 and below on the Dice Tower.